Okay, so we're on to our new pasuk. Yeah, all right, so 18, 16. Matan Adam Yarchiv Lo Lifne Gedolim Yan Cheno. How would you translate, translate this one? Uh, it's a weird, weird, uh, uh, what do you call it? Phrasing, weird juxtaposition of those two terms there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm assuming Matan is a gift. Yeah. Uh, so the gift of man um, makes him wealthy. Uh, so an interesting that you say wealthy. Where, where do you get wealthy from? Uh, isn't like Rechava, like Yarfi? Interesting. Okay. I mean, so, I mean, okay. Yeah. I mean, cause with the, the, so let's see the gift of a person gift of, or let's say a person's gift. I'll use the, the no definite article, a person's person's gift. Uh, it, the most literal meaning would be expands for him. Right. Or widens for him. Yeah. Right. Uh, cause you're using a figurative meaning already. And yeah, a lot of the Mufarshim are going to take figurative meanings, but like, you know, well, expands for him would be Bishvilo. Well, low low is for low can mean for also, right? Uh, right, right? Meaning it's not expanding him, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, widens or expands for him, okay? Um, and before gedolim, yeah. Um, I guess gifts make them. Uh, I don't know the best word for that. Yeah, yeah, kind of comfortable. Rest. I don't think so. Uh, well, okay. So I, it, I, I always forget this. There's nacha and there's noach, right? Yeah. So nacha, I think this is from nacha, I believe. Actually, I can check this because I could click on the Al Torah um, uh, Concordancia Intelligent Shorish Detector. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, when I click on it, it says loading text. <laughs> it says nacha. So nacha is to lead or guide. Interesting. Uh -huh. Okay. So it is nacha. Uh, like Yan Cheni B'Magle Tzadok L'Man So, and before Gedolim, uh, the great leaders, I don't know how, right? the great, uh, it will, and it is the uh, is the Matan, right? It will, um, what did we just say? Guide, lead? Uh, yeah. yeah, it will guide him, lead him, lead him, let's say lead him. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's just do our, uh, our uh, minimalist mafarshim here. So we got... Mitzvah Sion does not really seem to do much, right? He just says um, uh, that a matan is a doron, which I don't know why he has to say that. Like, I feel like matan is a pretty common term. I mean, it is weird that it's not matana, but whatever. I don't know. Um, what was it? Yeah, doron, I thought it was just a synonym for gift, isn't it? I mean, uh, doron is, is it a special kind of gift. Let's say, like, for example, I know, like, a mincha is, like, a tribute, right? But I don't know about if there's a, I don't, I don't know if there's a connotation to Doron. All right, we can check that if we need to. All right, so let's say for now, he's not really adding anything. All right, Sadigon, if you want to look at the Sadigon uh, is on here. It's just one word. Um, or it's not one word, but it's, it's uh, he only comments on one, uh, one word there. Top right um, is for, uh, uh, I actually didn't put the Dibra Moscow here. I guess it's for Yarchiv. Yeah. yeah. So he says, Kalelis, uh, so the, the, this commentary here is a Kavik's commentary. Um, have, what was it? We have. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Kolelis Shnei Inyanim. So Yarchiv encompasses two things. Rachvos, Rachvos Makum, Rachvos Halev. So width of place and width of heart. And Shemis Kabelas, the Saver Panim Yafos, the Af Simcha. That he will be... I guess he will be received, I think, right? Uh, like favorably, if favor upon me, I was like with smiling face and even with joy. So that footnote, Kappa, that's a commentary on the subtlety of the language. Yes, in Arabic. exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's, um, which is, it could be in a certain sense, a shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like all translations, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, um, but that's what he usually does is that uh, he uh, he carries the connotation. And there's, I should mention this when we use Sadigon, and uh, and this is like true of Kafak in general. Actually, I shouldn't go, I should go Kafak in general because that's in Hebrew. When he's translating from Arabic, um, then he, he is assuming a certain type of like authenticity in Judeo Arabic in the Yemenite community that has been preserved from the time of the Rambam. I've never actually looked into the question of how like, reliable that is because uh, obviously languages change over time but he'll often like 
express connotations like that, you know? Right. Yeah, okay, so it widens, so he says it includes uh, two concepts, width of place and width of heart, uh, that he is accepted favorably and even with joy, okay? And then the Targum, I, so it's fine, in my notes, we're getting to the end of where I prepared over the summer, by the way, we're gonna be into you know, new territory soon. And by new territory, I don't mean like absolutely new, but like not recently learned. In the summer, I marked down that the main idea came from the Targum, okay? But when I read this Targum, it looks like just a straight up translation. So, so like, like be suspicious of me when I, I translate this. So, Mohavte de Barnasha, the gift of a person, uh, and this morning I was chuckling to myself because I was thinking like if I were in uh, Balville and I wanted to open up a bar, I would call it Bar Nash. Mohavte de Bar Nasha Marav So that Marav, I think, is just a straight up translation of Yarhi, right? Like Revach means space. Uh, and I think that's where, that's where, that's where you got it from, right? Right, as a prophet, right? Um, uh, uh, so Marav will will widen for him. Ukdam Rav and in front of uh, Rav Rave is just a translation of Gedolim, uh, Mekima Le, it will establish him. Oh, I guess that is slightly different, right? So uh, it will establish him, uh, as opposed to lead him. So that seems to be taking it as no ach, not nacha, because no no ach is to cause to settle, you know, or to, to, to be settled or be at rest, yeah. Yeah, so it might that might be a mach locus among like, you know, grammar people about whether Yan Cheno comes from Noah or Nacha. Okay, and then just, uh, I'll just do the other translations right now that we got in Art Scroll. Art Scroll says, uh, so a man's gift broadens and then in brackets access for him. That's definitely an interpretation and leads him before the great. Living Knox says a man's gift eases his way. Another, Similar to broadens access. Yeah, but I feel like also eases his way. Yeah, I guess, I guess that could be the case, yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say broaden to access makes it sound much more like an emphasis on the external, whereas eases his way could either be that or it could be like something about like, okay. you know, him uh, and, and gains him entry before the great. Okay, that's very, very loose. Uh, I mean, very uh, uh, interpretive here. And alters is a man's gift clears the way for him. Okay, so that's also like we said for Yarkhev and, uh, and leads him before the great. Yeah. So I, I don't really see the need to focus on those translations because I think we kind of got all of that from, from before. Okay, so what are the questions here? Can we just say the translation one more time? Yeah, person's gift widens or expands for him. And uh, and then we've got belief negdolim yancheno and before the great, it will lead him or before the great, it will establish him. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, like, what is a gift? Um, and what, what is like, um, what, what exactly is happening with your thing? Yeah, okay, so what is a what is the gift in this context? I also don't know why it needs to say matanadam. I mean, that's kind of a particular question, but it's still, the, the phrasing is just, we, I mean. Wait, what do you mean? Like the... Matan no, 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 sorry, Matan Adam. Oh, Matan Adam. Yeah, Matan Adam, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, because like... Uh, yeah, why does it say Adam? Yeah, so I'm going to say, what is the given in this context? I, I was just thinking whether to put that in the same question or not. So what is the given in this context? Uh, what is a Matan Adam? I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm like answering already and not appreciating the question. <laughs> but like, it's just, I think, what can you just say it's emphasizing Adam as opposed to like Matan Chafam or anything else like that? Like it's just Stam guy. Hmm. Oh, could be, yeah. Okay. We, we can explore question. that when we do the answer. Well, that's, like the, that's a question of like, what is an Adam? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you? What was the other thing you said, Isaac? What exactly is is going to is happening with the Yarchiv? Yeah. So let's say what does Yarchiv Lo mean? Yeah. And then how and then the yeah. And then how does a Matan Adam uh, achieve Yarchiv Lo? Um, I, I have another question. That... Oh, sorry. Hold on a second. Uh, achieve Yarchiv Lo and leave naked on Yan Chenu. Right. Um, in the sense of, actually, I'll say, what, how does it, how does it achieve uh, lifne gedolim yan chenu, and then yan uh, chenu, and uh, what is the relationship between these two functions? Right? Is that is like the second one just like an explanation of the first one, or is it like? 
was gonna yeah. say like is that a res is the second half like a result of the first half or yeah. is it like a separate point yeah so let's say what is the relationship between the two clauses yeah, yeah what were you gonna say isaac um well, it might be um jumping forward a little bit um but it's it sounds like what the prosecutor is talking about is a bribe uh you're not the only one who says that <laughs> uh, you are a bribe yeah 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 right <laughs> interesting that you think that no um yeah 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 there's um yeah one of the one of the mafarshma i saw said that uh or two uh actually but uh it's not the majority thing but yeah yeah that's a possibility well, yeah i mean it sounds like you're um giving people money to giving people things to get them to I mean, that's definitely what's happening, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like, like basically the definition. Not what I was thinking at all. Yeah, it's also not what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, let's put it this way. You you are positing one thing, which is that you're positing a motive. You're saying you're giving things to people in order to get them to do stuff. It might not be saying that, you yeah. know? It might be that this is just the benefit of of giving, uh, or of, of, of a matanat or whatever well, that is. Isn't that really another question? Who's getting the matana? Like. He's he's learning it as like the gedolim are getting them off. Right. Yeah, it is weird, right? It doesn't doesn't say it doesn't specify the recipient or the giver. Or uh, the giver. right. That's also true. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let, let's just add those two questions. Okay. Who right. uh, is giving and who is receiving uh, this matan adam? And and who are the um who are the gedolim? Good. Yeah. Is gedolim like um gedoy <laughs> like toira? Like is it that kind of gedolim or is it like just anyone in a position of power? <laughs> <laughs> Right. I feel like Shlomo would be a preferring it. Unless you're Rashi. No, I mean, don't, don't, don't look at Rashi, but like, you know, like it, it could be, uh, you know, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone took it that way. Right. Yeah, right. right. That's a logical. Is it um, a question of thinking it's already that it's not an opposite? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, wh wh what, what or where is the opposite? Is there always an opposite? So this is, this is uh, the, the, the theory. Uh, again, I, I, it's very hard for me to remember whether this is my theory, Rabbi Moskowitz's theory, or Ken's theory. So I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but, <laughs> what was that? The Mishle Kabbal <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? We just saying Ken's probably really good at Mishle. Because we don't know Ken. You don't know Ken, yeah. But we, we just really know him well. in yeah. front of a fader. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So he's yeah. right. so just the voice of us. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, wasn't there a conspiracy theory going around before that, like, like, Ken and Gersh don't actually exist. Like, because like <laughs> yeah, people in the community know who Gersh is. Yeah, yeah but like right. people who love go home every time just don't, they don't, they don't yeah, know Gersh. Right? Yeah. Ken and Gersh are, are like always there. Yeah. But Gersh has his video on them. Yeah. So I've seen now that. I know. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Ken calls so it. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, I, I do, since you do, did mention the Mishle Cabal, which I've never referred to us as that, <laughs> as that before. Uh, but the, um, just to explain the, so Ken was my, uh, was Ken also comes from Seattle, you know, for actually from Mercer Island, like we're, we're, you know, like, like literally like around the corner from me. Um, and uh, so we, he was one year um, below me in high school. And I believe he was my, my first Chabrusa in Mishle in Yeshiva, uh, like as a regular Chabrusa. And when we first started, he was very, um, he was very bad uh, skills wise and like, like discipline thinking wise, but he was very intuitive in his thinking and would always come up with very, very like creative on target interpretations. And I was not very creative uh, and but was was skilled and disciplined and thorough. And then what happened is like over the years, we kind of yin yanged, uh, like he became better, uh, more of a disciplined thinker and more and better at reading and translating. And like, I uh, would like to think that I became more creative in my thinking. Um, and so we, um, we recently reunited in terms of learning Mishle um on a regular basis but uh but so he so like he and ryan moskowitz to like it was all like it was like this jumble in the very beginning and then like took off in slightly different ways but um but yeah yeah so everything we've done in, in chapter 18 has been with i prepared with ken so i forgot if i've just said that already that's what i just want to acknowledge yeah okay um opposites. what was it opposites opposites yes so <laughs> the theory <laughs> is so everyone holds that Mishle typically talks in opposites right um and he does that and everyone is going to hold that he does that for a reason right i mean presumably do we talk about that like what's the benefit in presenting this in opposites just given your knowledge of Mishle so far 
of it helps highlight the nuance of the India. Okay, can you be more specific in how it does that? Especially given like the subject matter of Mishle? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's like a contrast of like good and bad. I mean, those are good phrases. Yeah. But... Yeah, right. Is this, so so the, the whole book, is, first of all, just good and bad in general. You can sometimes appreciate what makes a thing good if you see the opposite, if you see the bad thing. But then, yeah. Also, you can, can, you, can frame it in two different ways. So that, um, so that you can see like the, the different like ways of like thinking about it. Yeah, that's also true, right? Is it's multiple angles um, of the scenario or the decision. In a book about decision making, then seeing the good decision and the bad decision, or the wise and foolish, or the righteous and wicked, uh, like it spells out for you what the two decisions are, you know? Uh, and then, yeah. Also, seeing things in extremes yes. clarifies the ideas. That's true. So I'd say it does two things. Seeing things in the extremes clarifies the idea. And I think this came up a while ago, a couple of days ago, that sometimes you don't know what the subject is until you see the opposite. Like for example, in our puzzle we did on Monday night, we had um, Harutz, which was diligent. And then we had um, uh, Ramia, okay? And it was, a, it was unclear whether Ramia was deceitful or lazy. You know, and it ended up, according to the way we learned, it, it ended up being both. But if you just had harutz, if you just had diligent, and I asked you what's the opposite of that, you probably would have automatically just said lazy. But then by by showing Ramia could mean diligent, sorry, could mean lazy or deceitful, it also showed a different quality of harutz that he is honest and it has integrity and is principled. So sometimes you don't know what this what how to define a term, or you don't know the scope of the pasuk uh, of like the subject until you see its opposite. Um, so based on that the theory that we came up with is when a puzzle doesn't state the opposite. So either the puzzle is going to explicitly state the opposite or it doesn't. And you have to like fill in the opposite on your own in order to complete the Mishleic learning of it. You know, even though Shlomo doesn't supply you with that. And yeah. that's going to everyone. You no, know, that, that last methodological point is, uh, is I'm saying that like we came up with that approach based on the rest of Mishle, um, but it's not like an explicit thing. You know, the first two points that Mishle tends to deal in opposites um, and uh, and like that's like by design for the book, those that everyone agrees with. Okay. Yeah. Does the whole cabal agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's also, um, uh, I'm, while, while we're talking about opposites here, then uh, this theory I know does come from Ken. So this is Ken, the middleman theory. Uh, that sometimes Michelet will have a unspoken about middle person in between the two extremes, uh, which sometimes or often is the audience of the puzzle because there's a talking to a person who can go either way. Hmm. Yeah. And it's unspoken? Um, it's, uh, the, yeah, yeah. Whenever you have two extremes, then yeah, it's going to be like an unspoken. I mean, that's almost like a natural result. Yeah. Like extremes right. are extremes. Right. What about the non extreme puzzle? It's like the last one. Uh, the non-extreme one's like the last one. Uh, what was the last one? Is Leif Chachamim, or Le, yeah, Le, the, the Nabon thing? Yeah, right. Yeah, that one's not going to be in between the two extremes. That's true. So I guess it's not always. <laughs> yeah. And, um, in this passage, what is your favorite? Yeah, that's the question. So, yeah, I, uh, I wrote that, but I forgot to, maybe I forgot to say it. Oh, are you asking me, or are you saying that as a question? Uh, I was just making sure we had that. Yeah, 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 we got that. Yeah, I think we got the questions now, right? And then there's the class of course, who is the audience? Yeah. Class of yeah. Yeah. I mean, and here the audience is interesting, right? So who is the audience? Um, is it the... People who are receiving the yeah. or people who are doing the Or the recipient, yeah. Or the gadolim. <laughs> right. Or the gadolim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, and then obviously what's the practical idea, yeah. And the, the practical application is going to be significant if you do say it's a bribe, you know, yeah. which I'm still not convinced about, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, just on, on the point of being a bribe. Yeah. Um, is there something about the connotation of the wording that makes you assume that it's ne not you, that makes one assume that it's negative or just bribe fits into the language? Fits um, into the shop? I don't see anything negative about it. And I think you're saying it fits in because it's talking about how a gift like grants you an yeah. audience, you know, which sounds like a, yeah. a okay. common bribe case. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And it's according to that explanation, it's being framed in the way that the person is thinking about it. Yeah. Like this is like 
This isn't like you're trying to sway someone. This is you're giving someone a gift to to like influence them, but not um, but you, but you know the way that you the people think about it is as a gift, not yeah. as like not as not as like a bribe. Right. But isn't that kind of an obvious point that if you give someone money, they'll do something for you? Yeah. So let's see. So that's what we have to figure right. out. Yeah. Um, I'll, on that point, I want to measure another methodology point from Monday, Monday night, um, is that uh, whenever you're, so on Monday, what happened on Monday was we had a, uh, if you want to be generous about it, you could call it a, uh, a classic Michelet interpretation of a Pasuk that seemed a little simple. And then if you want to be uh, negative about it, a cliche uh, <laughs> idea, you know? Um, and so I, I pointed out on that methodology year, or for the methodology in that year, that whenever you're confronted with something that looks very obvious in Michelet, um, either obvious like that you don't even need Michelet for, or it just sounds like the, the, a, a classic Michelet idea. So there's two ways I found to um, to get out of it or to like like uh, to uh, to go forward. One is to assume that it is teaching that idea, but it's teaching a nuance within the idea, or it's teaching a completely separate idea. So like when you find your mind like locked into like yeah, well, of course, bribes get you access, you know, so then either push that idea forward and see if there's some small point that it's teaching or some nuanced point, And that's the whole point of the puzzle, or that's just not what the puzzle is saying at all. And it's a completely new idea. Hmm. Yeah. I have a slight objection to, um, to uh, calling the Monday night idea cliche. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I did too, and I expressed it, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that, like, I think that, like, uh, I mean, this is about the particulars of the idea, but, like, it, um, I think that, um, like, thinking about the fact that people are going to, like, catch if you, if you have, like, deceitful skills because, because, you know, over time. Let me just ask you, is this going to go into detail about that idea? Because if so, then not everyone goes in this year. What? Very briefly. Okay. Yeah. Just, like, I think there, there's, like, a certain seeing of a long term consequence that is not. Um, it's not like obvious um, the like the better idea. Right. So the the response I had to that uh, in this year also, which is brings us back to methodology, is the um, is that you know again, Michelin is for at least four audiences: the Nar, the um, the Pessi, the Chacham, and the Navon. Right. So like it could very well be that the Pessi and the Nar need to hear that basic idea. You know, and then the Chacham and the Navon, you know, uh, go beyond that. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, that. back to our Pasuk then. So, I mean, I think the, the two main questions obviously are going to be the gift and then the Yarachi of Lo. Right. And depending on what route we take for that, then it'll it'll lead us in different places. So let, let's let's just list maybe uh, possibilities for Yarachi of Lo. Right, so we had the... Um, uh, well, the we could do that. Yeah. I think, I think the Yarachi of Lo is almost very dependent on what the gift is. Yeah, they're interrelated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you said again for the Yarachi Blo was first your first translation. Yeah, uh, makes him wealthy. Yeah. Okay. Good. So Yarachi Blo could be makes him wealthy, and that's like also what the um, the Targum says. Um, well, sorry, not. I guess yeah. Sorry, Marav When I translate in the Targum, it's the same ambiguity there. Like Reva means space, like being you know like a Reva from Shita Lashita, like in Safrus, you know. Um, and uh, or also means rather like profit, you know. Yeah, okay, so it makes him wealthy. Um, I think there's like the English translations that we saw did have like a uh, you know, like grants access or like creates space, yeah, in some say, like uh, affords opportunity, <laughs> okay, opportunity, which is similar to access, yeah. but I think it's, it's temporal or not, really not temporal. yeah, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, what does that mean exactly? That it grants space, yeah, well. See, here's the. This is why also maybe that if um, did you say Joe that it was? What did you say about the relation between the two clauses? You mentioned something when we um, raised the question. Yeah, that it's possible. Or uh, my question was, if the second half with Nikdon uh, Yankenu is a result of the first half, like mm -hmm. part of the broadening of yeah whatever is like one element of that is. Second. Yeah, like I, I was also thinking when I first read this, I was also thinking like it widens uh, for him, whatever that means. And then it's a, and then like implication is, and it can even go so far as like, like put him before Godolin, right. which is showing, which also is like revealing the nature of what it means to widen for him, like providing yeah. opportunity or access. Yeah. So, so my thought it could have been that and even goes that far or 
and also does this mm -hmm. meaning like it's possible that it's kind of like a different type of angle yeah right here you know what, one more question and this is kind of like with the opposites here but i think we have to ask this to get the facts is um uh without the matan adam uh then why uh would he be uh constricted or not leap naked because if this is a guy who's already going to be leaving Dolan, then this is not really doing much for him. So I'm, that's why I'm assuming that, like, yeah. you know, so, yeah. yeah. That's just like the inverse of the first one. It's the inverse of the first thing. And I think that, like, thinking about the question in those terms will not only help us to understand the opposite, but also help us to understand the mechanism of Yarkov Low. Like, what is it? Wh why is it necessary in order to, you know, to get him in front of Godolin? You said he could have possibly gotten in front of Godolin anyway, but this just makes it way easier? It could be, yeah. Okay. Certainly, there would be an obstacle, whether it's like an insurmountable obstacle or, uh, yeah. Um, the way that I'm thinking about it is Yarfib is more of um, like you can get like personal good things for himself. Like, I don't know, maybe wealth or maybe, I don't know, just like he has opportunities to do the things that he wants to yeah. do. Yeah. But then the second thing is Lipnay Dolan that like, then he also gets like this sort of like social boost mm -hmm. of the money. Like, I see. On top of just the practical. Right. Yeah. Okay, that, that seems like a good paradigm. Uh, now, just the question is, how how does it do it, right? Yeah. Um, I think maybe I don't have this fully worked out yet, but um, I think if a, if a person is like generous and giving with with their possessions, mm -hmm. um, then that acts as a, as a certain sort of social lubricant, which I think is the second half like. Um, and you know, these people will, will um, like you and, and you know, um, like I said, I recommend you or whatever. Um, and I don't, I don't exactly how the mm -hmm. mechanism worked out, but um, and I'll also, you know, make people want to like do business with you or, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I'm gonna have to go in like five minutes, uh, but uh, but because it's Wednesday, um, but um. Uh, let's look at Rubenu Yona because he takes an approach the way that you uh, took it, and he also gives us another uh, a possibility for Yarkov well, that's that we wouldn't have naturally come up with. So Rubenu Yona, actually, look at this on all Torah. Uh, Rubenu Yona says, "Matan Adam Yarkov Lo of Lifnei Gedolim Yankano Yarkov Lo Al Sorry Yarkov Lo Haaretz." So the land will be widened for him. Okay, Inyan Ki Ata Hirchi Vereshem Lano. Uh, God has widened for us. Okay, so th th that's just using the, the language of it. Uh, you'll see what he means. And the explanation is ki ish matan. So he says ish matan. Uh, yatsa lo shen. Uh, a name will go out for him. A reputation will go out for him. But he shall lo b'chol ha'aretz. And his, it, people will hear about him in all the land. U'v'chol makom asher titroch kavragla. And wherever he turns, yaki ruhu letov v'yishavachuhu then people will recognize him and praise him. Okay, so that, the fact that he says ish matan, I think is a different reading than we've been reading it now, but it's like what you were saying, Isaac, is like, it's not just when you give a gift, it is if you are a, 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 a gifter, <laughs> you know, if you're a generous person, okay? And then he says, so that's his first explanation of Rachav, is that it'll like, I mean, I don't know, we, we have to like think about whether he would translate it differently, but it means he, his reputation is gonna go far and, and wide, okay? Um, all right, then he says, we talk in the far it's possible to explain Yarkiv Lo, Yarbe Lo Ohavin. So it'll make him, uh, it'll earn him friends. That's the other thing you were saying about the social effect. Ki Marbis Ohavim, but then he, he interprets it differently though. Ki Marbis Ohavim, Yarbe Shalom, via Niach Lo Me'etzav Midaga. So an increase of friends will increase your peace and will relieve you of sadness and worry or anxiety or sorrow or whatever. Um, sorry, sorry, uh, and widening is the opposite of, of, uh, of worry. Right, so um, uh, like narrowness is used to mean like trouble or, you know, when you're troubled, like, like David Moses, answer me from, from the, uh, with with the the, the wide the wideness of, of God, which is the opposite of uh, narrowness. 
Yeah. So, um, oh, and then also one more thing. Uh, so, uh, the gift will increase um, kavod for, of the guy. And it will place him because they will seek out his companionship or his relationship uh, due to his the goodness of his actions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why is yeah? Why is matan um, used for both parts, like the same object for both? Why are there two things that go along with matan and there's no? Second? Yeah. So the way Rabbi and Yona is answering, it sounds like he's saying matan adam. I would translate it according to Rabbi and Yona. I know he says ish matan. I would say the generosity of a man widens for him. And places him before Gedolim. It's that same quality of the, right. the generosity. It's like the gifting of a person, yeah. not in the, in the instance sense. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but still, it's like, um, why is it two different things of the same thing? The generosity of man does two different things. There's so, no way. Yeah, so I think I'm not learning it as two different things. I'm learning it as the second half is the sheer in the first result that his it, 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 he's going to get this reputation of being a generous person and that's even going to reach the the gadolin okay. you know now we still have to figure out even though this is a, a good commentary we still have to figure out well what's the idea you know here like that's that's a good shot but like what what's the what what's the the main idea here um but this, what i like about this also is it does explain that weird lashon of matan adam yeah. you yeah. know yeah uh, and similarly, I think on uh, your uh, source sheet there, um, one other person said something like this. Oh yeah, the the the, the Rinachmias who is on the left, uh, two from Jerusalem. Who, who is it? I don't know. Uh, I know that he oftentimes just copies from other Mafarshim, and then sometimes he'll add his own stuff. But it seems like a digest style commentary. Um, so it's talking about the, the trait of generosity. Um, the trait of generosity. Because the gift of a generous person will widen for him from his Sara. Uh, like Rabbi Yonah, he will find friends through his generosity. So that's not even like um, granting him an uh, access to them and saying he will seat him with a good olin. like actually like like get him into a higher ranking position um and then uh okay fine and then there's someone else also on that page uh the the rid who's above the rinayona matan adam mishihu vatran venosin mamona lacherim so someone who is uh um what's vatran it's generous but it's like it's squanderer but in a good way like who gives freely yeah you know, like someone who gives freely uh, to others. That's the subject. Okay, so let's let it percolate and then like try to define the idea tomorrow and then also see if maybe we could, maybe we could do a, a, the bribe interpretation and see uh, yeah. where that leads. Yeah. Leads, it'll lead before Gadolim, yeah. yeah. I'm also 100% convinced as to whether there's actually proof that. Okay, yeah, so we'll have to, we'll have to think about it. All right, let's stop for today. Cool.